What's good y'all, it's your boy Ross back at it again with another video And last night I got a chance to check out Clash of Champions Now, I will say this Overall, as a show for the matches that I did watch and see It was enjoyable Surprisingly more enjoyable than I thought it would be But nevertheless, it was enjoyable uh, I'm gonna talk about just the matches and the segments that I I was really interested in seeing um, First and foremost we got to talk about the opening match, um, the ladder match between uh, Matt Hardy. I said Matt Hardy. I'm tripping. Jeff Hardy, um, AJ Styles, and uh, Sami Zayn. Very entertaining ladder match. One of the better ladder matches of this year, especially with the climate and circumstances that we've been dealing with. Very fantastic. They really built up Sami Zayn um, as someone that, you know, really is hungry for the intercontinental championship and it's good to see the intercontinental championship start off the show in a great way like it, it was it was very enjoyable once again i gotta give much respect to jeff hardy still willing to do those high risk spots like it's ridiculous how many times we've seen jeff hardy jump from the top of a ladder to a swanton bomb to someone else through a ladder to the floor below like dude's been doing this since i was a little kid and still doing it putting his body on the line so much respect to to jeff for just doing that man like i dude is ridiculous six six spot um but overall I think the right person won. Sami Zayn definitely deserves the Intercontinental Champion because um, he's 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 doing some of his best work. He's doing some of his best work, and and Sami Zayn has always been underrated when, in my eyes, when it comes to WWE and how they've booked him. So, very interested in to seeing where they take uh, his title reign. But uh, definitely, that was a great way to start off the show. And then at that point, I kind of skimmed through. The, the next segment I even considered watching, I was uh, really interested in seeing what uh, Oscar and, and uh, Bailey was going to do because I had, of course, you had to know Sasha was going to be in the mix. And ultimately, Bailey is doing some of the best work she's been doing as a heel. It's, it's, it's like a theme going on in WWE. The people that needed to be heels are actually excelling at being heels. You understand what I'm talking about? As I get later on into the review. Um, but yeah, she she couldn't put away Oscar. Bailey hit her with uh Bailey hit Oscar with a steel chair, purposely got disqualified. I'm like, okay, I like this. Very heel like tactics. Bailey is on some conniving evil, no one's taking this championship from me type stuff. So I'm cool with that. And then out of nowhere, Sasha comes out and attacks her. Now the thing about this attack. That was kind of annoying for me personally. I know uh, Sasha is selling the injury. You know, she got the neck brace on. But if it's me personally, neck brace or not, and someone I considered a real good friend tried to end my career multiple times, I am going to destroy them. I don't care if they're pleading with their lives. I'm going to destroy them, and I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure I put them on the shelf for a very long time so that was my thing like the attack was somewhat satisfying but i think it should have been a little bit more aggressive on sasha's side like i would have loved for referees to try to break this up i would have loved there to been a, even a little extra segment where they're still fighting in gorilla position they're just fighting all in the back i think that would have sold it a little bit more like sasha's trying to murder her and it would make this feud just a little bit better, in my opinion. So I kind of felt like they held back on the brawl. Like, it could have been better. But other than that, that's the only reason why I watched that match. Only to see how Sasha was going to get involved. So I'm looking forward to them building up the match between them two. Uh, I think it's I think it's going to be interesting. I think it's going to be hella enjoyable. and Probably one of the better matches, depending on what pay-per-view they put it on. Honestly, if you want to be honest, I believe Hell in a Cell is the next pay-per-view. That is a match you put in Hell in a Cell. If they book it right in the upcoming weeks and they are destroying everything, they're destroying matches, they're destroying backstage segments and stuff like that, you put that match 
in a Hell in a Cell. That deserves to be in a Hell in a Cell because it's a blood feud match. And let them destroy each other. I'm all for it. Um, So after that, I kind of skimmed through again. Like, there's matches on the card. I didn't even know were matches to begin with, nor did I even care because I had been watching Raw and SmackDown on the regular. I just watched for, like, certain clips and clips that you guys sent me to check out. Um, I want to say the match that I, w- I, I was looking forward to, actually, was the Randy Orton versus uh drew mcintyre ambulance match and i like the promo package leading up to it how they were pretty much giving each other like one of their brutal finishing moves um randy orton was constantly kicking drew mcintyre in the head and i like the fact that it took multiple to put drew down and they build in Drew as this unstoppable force that you really have to put in work to to put down. And then I like the fact that Drew got his revenge a couple weeks later. Was Claymore kicking Randy Orton's face off his head multiple, multiple, multiple times throughout the show. I thought that was dope. They set it up as an ambulance match. And um, I enjoyed it, man. I I enjoyed the promo package leading up to the match. And what... One thing that I did like about this match, it was very entertaining. I know some people may not be a fan of it, but I like the fact that the people that Randy Orton had been kicking in the head for months leading up to this match, almost all of them were involved in this match. Big Show got involved, choke slam Randy Orton through a table. Then they go into the back area, the brawling in the back area. Christian comes out of nowhere and attacks Randy Orton. Then they get get by the actual ambulance itself. Brutal spot. Uh, I believe Drew ends up damn near going through the the driver windshield. Not the driver windshield, but the windshield of the ambulance. Also a dope spot was when Drew was about to hit the Claymore kick on Randy Orton. He kicked the damn door off the hinges. I was like, yo. That was pretty, pretty intense. That was a dope visual. He didn't kick the door off its hinges, bro. And, uh, of course, he was selling his leg hurting after that, which for a normal human being, my leg would have broke trying to do that. So uh, it was just, it was it was nice that they, they were still brawling. It, the focus was on them. But you had these little moments of people getting their revenge. And it was cool to see Shawn Michaels just come out of nowhere Super kick Randy Orton and then push him off the top of the ambulance. I thought that was dope. Um, I I really wish I'll get to the end of it after I you know kind of get to the end of the match. I'll I'll finish my thoughts there. So at this point, you know the match is almost over, and I want to say Randy Orton actually could have won the match when he hit that RKO on the floor put drew in the ambulance he could have won the match and that's when i had a feeling he's not winning this match one because they've had all these people come out of nowhere and try to get their revenge he's not winning this match the way they're booking it it doesn't seem like he's winning this match two he took too long to close the damn ambulance door i was like oh no he's not winning the match as soon as he closed the one door and started laughing instead of closing the other door to win the damn championship I was like, oh, he's losing this match. Drew opens up the door, pretty much hits him with a nice, mean Claymore. And I like this. He didn't just throw him back in the uh, the ambulance. No, he slid him back out. And he hit him with a punt kick of his own. Then he closed the ambulance door. Boom, the match is over. And who else is driving the ambulance? None other than Ric Flair. Um... Now, what I was talking about earlier on my thoughts, what could have been better about this match, in my opinion, and I know I'm not sure how far along Edge recovery is coming along, but I would have loved if Edge was one of the last people to get involved in the match and cost Randy Orton the title, even if it was just a small part. But I know he, I'm not sure if he's medically cleared to do anything you know too crazy wwe related so uh it would have been dope that would have been the perfect setup um but at this point the match 
for what it was entertaining. I enjoyed this match. It was hella entertaining. I was looking forward to it. I like the different aspects of people coming back to screw Randy Orton over because they got to get their revenge in some way. And at this point, Randy should not be going for the title. I'm sorry. I No, he should not be going for the title at this point because there's no point. He is lost to Drew McIntyre. Three pay-per-views in a row. He has not been able to get the job done at all. It needs to be somebody else. Somebody else. I don't know who you have to face Drew at this point, but he's done. Like he, I do not want to see them fight no more. Even though it will be entertaining, it's like if you have them fight again, it's like, all right, bro, he got to win this match now. It, it kind of takes away the surprise of is he going to win the match because like bro if he loses for the fourth time not only should he never get another championship title run or championship uh shot at drew he should just go back to smackdown bro because it's like yo that you can't win you can't beat drew let it go so i hope they don't book them to have any more future matches for a while just kill the feud it's done Let's move on to something else. See who's ne- uh, the next opponent for Drew McIntyre. Um, and the last but not least, one of the best matches, not because of the in-ring ability, because of the storytelling, none other than the chief himself, the head of the table, Roman Reigns versus Jay Uso, man. And I must say, fantastic match. They made you believe that Jay actually stood somewhat of a chance for a little bit. I also like the fact that Roman Reigns, he came out there, no shirt on this time, had a nice tribal tattoo, looking like a badass. I was like, okay, they're slowly but surely transitioning him, transitioning him from this Roman Reigns shield gimmick to this Roman Reigns tribal chief, I run things, this is my yard. There's nothing anyone can say or do to stop me. Comes out there with the shirt, tribal tattoo, all oiled up, paws, and um, he he's just doing his thing, bro. He's looking confident, looking menacing. Jay comes out there, does his normal stick, and they get into it, bro. And I like the trash talking. Roman was talking so much trash, and he was pushing his weight to the referee. Like it was, it was, it was amazing to see beautiful work. Like I said during earlier parts of this uh, review, s- some of the heels right now, like Bailey and Roman Reigns, people that you would have wanted to be heels a couple years ago, they are excelling beautifully as being perfect heels right now, and it's great to see. Right now, Roman Reigns is doing his thing, man, as a heel, and I. I love it. Um, so at this point, Roman Reigns, he's getting he's getting the uh he's kind of controlling the pace of the matches, if you could say that. And at some point you had Jay um really get some offensive moves in, but all it did was just make Roman angry. And it ca- it came to like the end of the match, and this is my favorite part of the match actually, where Roman pretty much can pin. He can pin Jay. But he doesn't want to pin him. He wants to brutalize him. He wants to make a point. So he says, yo, I will end this right now. All you have to do is say, I am the breadwinner. I am the chief. I sit at the head of the table. Just say that. Tell me that. And I'll let it go. I'll end the match. And Jay was like, nah, not today, Oos. I'm not doing it. So Paul Heyman's like, yo, you, you're the head chief. You you run things. You, you you're the guy. You're the champ. You you're you're the breadwinner for the family. He's like, nah, I don't want you to say it. I want him to say it. And he just start wailing on him, just beating the crap out of him to the point where the ref tried to stop. And like I was saying earlier, he's telling the ref, yo, yo, get your hands off me. I'm gonna do whatever the hell I want to. I run things, and at the end of the day, if you don't listen to me, basically saying I can get you fired type stuff. Like, I'm going to take care of what I got to take care of. This is family business. Move out the way. Starts proceeding to beat the crap out of him. Jimmy comes down the ramp. He's about ready to throw in a towel, bro. And he asks Jimmy, all right, since he don't want to do it, you tell me I sit at the head of the table. You tell me I'm the chief. 
You tell me that and I'll stop it. He didn't do it. So he proceeds to beat the hell out of him. Of course, Jay's telling his brother, don't throw in the towel, Oos. Don't throw in the towel, Oos. And it makes Jay look like somewhat of a tough individual because he's not tapping out. He's not giving in to Roman Reigns. He's not going to say it. And he's just going to keep getting pummeled until he can't get pummeled no more. So he didn't really submit Jimmy was the one that threw in the towel after Roman Reigns just started laying into him. And even when he threw in the towel, he still kept laying in the Jey Uso. Jimmy had to come in there and break it up. I was like, what are you doing, bro? Like, this is your family. Like, what are you doing? You proved your point. We get it. Like, what are you doing? And it was so beautiful. They 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 put the flowers. Uh, uh, I want to say it was Paul Heyman got the flowers. They put around his neck. As symbolizing he is the chief of the family and uh they gave him the championship belt and he retains which we all knew was going to happen we just didn't know how now if there's anything i could have added to this match storytelling wise i wish there was a little bit of blood and the reason why i say that because i think that would sell this brutal brutal savagery from roman if he's beating him up and Jay can't even defend himself, and he busts him open, like just completely bust him open, it makes it look that much more graphic. And it makes you just hate Roman, like, damn, bro, you grew up with these people. The promo package they had before this match was fantastic. They had the pictures of them all growing up together, going to the same school, and you go to the match, at the end of the match, he's bloodied. He's bleeding. He's bruised up by someone that he considered family. That would have been just a perfect just picture to see him bloodied and bruised up and Roman holding the title. Like, I'm the chief. This is what I this is what I gotta do. And I like I don't know if it was I think it was Corey. It may have been Corey or Michael Cole, Michael Cole who said this on commentary. But they were basically like, if he will do this to his family. What does it, if he will do this to his family to keep the title, what will he do to somebody else that's not his family to keep the title? And I like that. That's why I said I wish there was just a little bit of blood, but it's okay. Nevertheless, this was fantastic. One of the best matches on the show just because the storytelling was top notch. Um, I enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with him. There was a little tease that, um, Right after Alexa Bliss had a little spaz out transformation, she walks up the ramp to go in the back, and Roman Reigns comes down the ramp with his championship, and Alexa Bliss looks at him with just this evil disgust because she's kind of like under the control of Bray Wyatt. So people are rumoring that that could be the next setup match, which ultimately it would be cool. But at the same time, I don't want that to happen because let's keep this a, a, a hundred percent real. He's not winning that match. Bray Wyatt will not win that match. If he faced Roman Reigns, he will not win that match. It doesn't matter if it's Bray Wyatt. It doesn't matter if it's The Fiend. It doesn't matter if it's Bray Wyatt and Alexa Bliss. He is not winning that match, and that will only further bury him. So I'm not sure if I would want to see that. But there's also rumors coming into the, the rumor mill that it may be The Rock, and it kind of makes sense at some point The Rock and Roman would clash and go at each other because Roman's saying, I'm the head of the family, but Rock has been the head of the family. Rock is the pinnacle of that family lineage because it's The Rock. You know what I'm saying? He's made a name for himself in wrestling and outside of wrestling, and I would actually be interested to see The Rock versus Roman Reigns, heel Roman Reigns versus The Rock. I think that would be fucking fantastic. So I'm not sure where they go with this. This is just speculation. But comment down below if you guys are looking forward to where they take Roman Reigns at this point. And also if you enjoyed this pay-per-view. I for the most part, for the matches that I did see and care to see. I enjoyed it so it gets a thumbs up for me but let me know if you guys enjoyed it and let me know if you guys think The Rock will get involved with Roman Reigns at some point and would you guys be interested in seeing that so I appreciate all the love and support this video was hella long I had to get out as many thoughts as possible but I appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all on the next one peace <laughs>